This question has two parts. So the part about uh, the, those who don't meet the current criteria and expats, so I presume you mean non-Qataris. As we said from the very beginning, there is no differentiation between Qataris or non-Qataris, between citizens or residents. All are, are eligible. So when we say at this phase one of the campaign, those 70 and above or those with chronic uh, critical illnesses uh, or frontliners, let's put it this way, regardless of nationality. So let's put an example. If you are a non-Qatari, you are a resident of the state of Qatar and you're above 70 or you have renal failure, then you are eligible to take the vaccine at this phase. So as we describe the phases and as we announce who's eligible in each phase, it has no difference whether you are a Qatari or not a Qatari. So far, scientific data uh, received from across the countries who had this different strain or the new strain of the COVID-19 or the COVID uh, virus is that it's not more serious, it's not more dangerous, it's just faster in transmission. So the, the, the ability of this virus or this new strain to infect others is slightly faster than the ongoing strain. The manufacturing companies of the vaccines uh, have stated that as per their data and their scientific research, so far the current vaccine we have is able to protect from this new strain as well. But just to be on the safe side, they are also now running tests in parallel towards this new strain to just reassure us and reassure the world on the effectiveness of the existing vaccines on the new strain. Um, the arrival of the vaccine, it's in phases, and along with it, we are rolling the campaign in phases. So we started with those age 70 and above and with critical chronic illnesses and frontliners dealing with COVID-19 uh, cases uh, on the launch of the campaign. Soon, the next phase will be announced. And as the days and weeks pass by, we will keep expanding until it covers the entire community in the state of Qatar. If I take the vaccine and I catch the COVID-19, as we said, 95% of those who took the vaccine in the clinical trials, or even now in the States and the UK, have developed sufficient immunity to protect them from the infection. Should you, between dose one and two, get exposed to COVID-19, then yes, there's the possibility of catching the infection. Or later on, if you happen to be one of the minority who may not have developed sufficient antibodies, our bodies respond differently to medication and vaccines. Our immune system responds differently. There's no one person equal to the other person. So we don't know how your body will respond to it compared to mine. So the level of antibodies and immunity developed for each one of us may vary. What we believe based on the scientific information that even if you don't develop sufficient antibodies and immunity to protect you 100% from getting the infection and you do get infected, it's most probable that your uh, infection will be very mild and with very mild symptoms. And, and it will not go into any clinical, uh, sorry, um, critical uh, prognosis. So you should be fine. But most people will develop sufficient antibodies. How long it will last. But what we know based on following up of those who already took the vaccine during the clinical trials and from those who took the vaccine across the world so far, that it minimum, minimum stays for four to five months and hopefully it will be even more than that. Uh, with time and with following up those that develop antibodies through the vaccine will be able to have a clearer picture on how long it will be effective. What it, we needed to do now is that we need many people, at least 70 to 75 percent of the population to take the vaccine to ensure we have sufficient people with antibodies to enable us to cut the chain or the break the chain of infection and that way we can slowly go back to normal. So we're monitoring and if we have any more scientific evidence about it, we will definitely let you know.